So how's this 2007 Jeep JK Unlimited four-door holding up? After 14 years, I bought this in uh, 2007. This is an 07 JK. It's the first year of the JKs. The first one, a little bit longer than a regular Jeep, a little wider, and it weighs a lot more. Anyways, uh, so let's go over this, man. Uh, welcome to the channel. This is Chris, of course. All these subscribers around the world and uh, here in the States, be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate it. Help us out. So uh, let's head out and take a look at it. We'll go to a place called Salmon Falls. It's a historic uh, mining area here in California by the bridge. It's on the American River, which flows down from the Sierra. So here in Northern California, man. Hey, welcome to the channel. Let's get this thing on the road. So hey, come along, let's check her out. 2007 Jeep JK Wrangler Unlimited. Uh, bought it in 2007, stock. I'll show you all the things I did over the years and how's she holding out after all these years. Uh, what, 14 years now of daily driver use, maybe 40, 45 miles a day. So uh, bear with me, man. Let's go for a ride. Let's check her out and I'll show you the things I did over the years. Well, hey guys, welcome to Salmon Falls. Salmon Falls is a, uh, a place that uh, there was a lot of mining in the 1800s around here. And uh, I thought I'd take a quick peek before we, uh, and I'll fly some drone footage for you. How's that? Kind of give you an idea of what's going on. It's a beautiful place, river's up a little bit. We had a big Sierra storm. Um, it looks good. It's a beautiful place. This is the American River. Who, it runs out of the Sierras to Folsom Lake and uh, downtown Sacramento where it splits into the Sacramento River. Anyways, uh, well, like I said, welcome to the channel. Let's look at this Jeep. Thought I'd show you a little bit of the, uh, little bit of the uh, terrain and the uh, natural beauty here. So anyways, let's go over this thing. Uh, just want to show you a little bit of the area. There's a lot of people up here today. It's a wonderful day here in Northern California. And yeah, they're having some kind of festival over there. It doesn't matter. Um, let's get down to, to uh, business here. Anyways, this is my uh, 07 JK. I had it since 07. Beautiful uh, thing that I worked very hard to get. Now, I'm just going to go over this really quick. And then we'll go over the motor and the mileage and uh, how long she's been holding up. So I got old metal cloak under there. That was an upgrade. Metal cloak's a great suspension system. Uh, this is the uh, this is Smitty Belt uh, 9500 winch. And I've used quite a bit to pull folks out. That's a uh, body armor bumper. They don't make those anymore. I think that's kind of old school. We got that about what, what, nine years ago. Anyways. There she is. Um, how's she holding out? What have I done? Let's take a look here. Uh, I got all my GoPro mounts. Need those. Now, I built this overhead console to put my CB in. I fabbed that out of some parts, welded it together. Works really good. You know what I like about it? It reminds me of being in a jet. I got all the overhead switches and stuff. Very convenient. It runs on my lights and my winch and a bunch of other stuff in my air tank. So, other than that, real quick, since this, uh, this Jeep's so old, well, it's not that old. I took all the carpet out. <laughs> it was all old and grody. Uh, still loaded up with some of my gear from the last trip. But, uh, like I said, took all the carpet out. Don't need carpet. Who needs carpet? Anyways, uh, body armor. Um, rear bumper, tire carrier. Not too shabby. Works pretty good. That's the original top from 2007. It's been holding out. Uh, typical Dana 44 in the back. 
and I got some D-rings on my uh, course on my bumper. So that's just a quick overview. This is a Smitty Bill rack. It's it's done pretty good. Some backup lights there at night. When you're out on the trail, you'll be able to see behind you so you don't back up into anything. You know, it's pitch black up in the Sierra is where we go usually. But uh, that's just a quick overview. Uh, let's get into the cockpit here. The cockpit. Um, where's my switch for my my onboard air right there? I hope you guys can see that. And I'll go over that in just a minute. Very handy. It's made by V Air. By Air. Um, don't know how to say it. But uh, you know, it's a quick overview of the Jeep, and we'll get into some of the particulars about the drivetrain and the engine. All right, guys, let's go over this motor. And this is uh, something that a lot of people, when it came out in 2007, had a lot of concerns about, this power plant. This is uh, all uh, 07 Wranglers came with the Wranglers, sorry, came with the 3.8 liter V6, which had a whopping 205 horsepower and 240 pound feet of torque. So it came with a standard six, uh, six speed manual. This one has the uh, four speed automatic and uh, tow rate rated about uh, 3,500 pounds. I towed some, towed a boat from Southern California with this thing, and yeah, did pretty good. So, anyways, a little history. 2007 was the first year of the JKs. This is the third generation of the Wrangler. The body and chassis were completely redesigned uh, during this era when Jeep was part of Dimer Chrysler. And after two, uh, 2014, as far as I can remember. It became Fiat Chrysler. And then Fiat Chrysler, sorry, too much coffee today, uh, automotive merged again. I think they formed a new company called Stellantis, which now makes Jeep, Ram trucks, Alfa Romeros, and Maseratis. Who knows? Maybe they'll put a Maserati in a Jeep Wrangler. A Maserati, a Maserati. Wouldn't that be cool? So anyways, continuing, uh, but not boring you guys. I'm just thinking, if you're thinking about buying one of these uh, 2000 Wranglers, this might help you out a little bit anyways. Uh, things I've done, uh, new radiator, uh, coil pack in there, I've replaced all the spark plug wires. It's got a new uh, alternator. Um, you know, it's just upkeep. If things break, you fix them. It's all part of being a Jeep owner. Uh, anyways, uh, what else have I done? I gotta work on the wiring on this part. <laughs> this is the Optima battery. You guys gotta get one of these, they're great. Don't look at that wiring. I need to uh, work on that a little bit. But anyways, I'm just basically taking care of it. Oil changes. I don't drive it like I stole it. Um, gosh, you take care of uh, the maintenance, it'll take care of you now. I get a whopping 11 miles per gallon. That's because probably I'm carrying a lot of weight with the rack and the uh, the 35 inch tires and all the bumpers that's a lot of weight man pull a lot of weight brothers now as far as street ability uh, this is a daily driver like I said I drive about 45 miles or so to work so I built this with a plan now there has to be a balance and a mix between daily driver street ability and a dedicated off-road build in my case at least there was a balance so there had to be a balance as i drive it every day um like i said i had that in mind when i built this it's capable off-road and as a daily driver man it runs really good with that metal cloak suspension uh upgraded from the uh, stock suspension so what else i got a whole bunch of things to say it's got the standard 4.10s uh gear package now in 2007 most uh, Wranglers, Wrangler Unlimiteds had the, uh, gosh, 3.73, I think, diff ratios. But uh, in uh, my year, uh, Jeep offered a 410 gear ratio upgrade uh, to non Rubicons, and this is the only year they offered the 410. The only year they offered the 410 for, uh, like I said, this is not a Ruby, and it's unlimited. So. And does pretty good. Now I'll go over how, when I put the 35 inch tires on, how I uh, kind of chipped it out a little bit and made it uh, more streetable. 
Uh, so anyways, as far as tires, uh, these are Renato Ridge Grapplers. These are 35 inch tires. I didn't want to get the mud terrains, the MTs, because they howl a little bit, at least in my case, the last time. This came with the MTs. Uh, these are the ATs all terrains. They're good for mileage. And Nitto makes great tires, man. Uh, these Ridge Grapplers have given me so much traction out on the trail. I love them to death. Um, what else? Those are, I can't even remember. Vision, Vision 35 inch rims. Those are fake bead lockers. You guys probably know that. Lighting, lighting it on the trail. So I got these cubes. Uh, they work pretty good. Uh, I think Night Brighter, uh, gosh, I've had those for a while. Uh, boo, I think they're rough countries, which a lot of people don't like rough country, but I think that uh, for a budget price, and I built this on a budget, I don't have a lot of money. I don't know you guys don't either. And the light bar in the front. So all four of those on work really good. They said uh, we live out here a little ways, um, not too far from here. And when I come up at night, I get off at midnight, there's a lot of deer. So I light that mama up so I can see their little glowing eyeballs and they run across the road a lot. And I uh, just don't want to hit one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing, so I'm trying to remember. This is all on the fly. I just came out of my day off. The guys shoot this, so bear with me. Uh, standard uh, transfer case. Fortunately, it's got the Dana 30 in the front, which I want to switch out to a 44. I just don't have 2,500 bucks right now. Uh, another thing, if you live in California, this is a cool club to join. The California Four Wheel Drive Association has a lot of really cool runs up to the Sierras, the desert. And, you know, California is pretty diverse. We have mountains, we have desert, we have whatever you really want. But if you're in California, man, guys, and you're a four wheeler, be a cool club to join. Okay, left standard uh, Rubicon Express shocks, which are pretty worn out. I got this like six years ago. I got this uh, this lift, three and a half inch lift. Does pretty good, not bad. I like to get the metal cloak set up, but uh, like I said, they're, it's pretty pricey. Great, uh, I think they're really high quality. I love metal cloak, and this thing uh, does really good on the street and on the trail. Now onboard air is very important when you're out on the trail. You want to air down, get more traction, especially in the snow. We just went up to the snow and I aired down pretty low. I think it was about 12 or 13. That's the uh, my onboard air. I installed this. Um, here's an idea for you guys. Uh, this is a Vier uh, 2.5 gallon tank. Fills up the uh, tires pretty quick. Now here's my plumbing. Uh, ran it up to the gauge in the front. This goes through the uh, back of the tub and goes out to an air chuck, which I have right here. I've got a little plug in there to keep stuff out. Air chuck, air up right there. Works pretty darn good. Now, I wanted to go over this real quick. Last but not least, now when I got the 35s with the stock set up, I needed to chip it out because when you put 35 inch tires on a rig that's not made for 30 inch, 35 inch tires, your speedometer is going to be, mine was off six miles an hour, which is not good. And my shift points in my transmission were not good either. So I got this thing, it's called a flash cal and uh, by super chips, it's a calibration tool. What this will do is uh, you can change your gear ratio, 3.73, 410s, 5s, whatever. And then you can uh, uh, tune it in. Now, there's just so you know, guys, there's a lot of videos out on this. I'm not going to show you how to use it. It's pretty easy. Plugs into your OBD port, OBD2 port, underneath your dash, that port there. And this thing really helped me out and improved my gas mileage quite a bit. You know, uh, just being able to calibrate for the uh, 35s and then uh, my speedometer was right on it was pretty cool so I would highly recommend getting one of these uh, God, they're kind of pricey it's about 200 bucks for one of these but I can get one I think it'll really help you out if you upgrade and get 35s or 37s you can dial it in you just put your tire size into the computer there into the interface and then you can, uh, you can dial in your tires and it really helps man even out on the trail the other thing you can do this is a diagnostic tool too so you know those obg2 readers 
that, uh, you know, tell you, you know, what's going on with your Jeep as far as uh, check engine light stuff and codes. This will clear them and uh, you'll be able to see what's going on so you don't have to go buy a reader. So anyway, that, that's about it, guys. I just wanted to go over my rig. Anybody, uh, you guys thinking about uh, buying a 2007 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited JK and get them for a really good price stock and just build them like I did. And like I said, about four years it took me to get all this stuff together, you know, on a budget. But I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this has been a really good rig. I mean, you know, the, the earlier times, Edmonds and the other, uh, you know, the guys that critique automobiles gave it a really bad rap and a low star rating but this thing is it's held out for me i love it um it's like i said man if you want a budget rig you want to rig sorry you want to start out on that base and build up from there i think uh this will work for you man you know oh uh, what else that's it Chris from Redbound Terrain, thanks for joining me. Like I said, this is just off the fly, blah, blah, blah type thing. And uh, I hope you guys have a good day. And from Salmon Falls, California, beautiful day out here in Northern California. You guys take care, you guys all over the world. And um, keep it together. Watch out for the knuckleheads, they're out there. Take care, man. I'll see you on the next video. This is Chris. The world's first four-door, five-passenger Wrangler. Wrangler Unlimited. A new species from Jeep.